attempts at flirtation with yeah. Sandy. I, you know, yeah, it would be a turnoff. I, I, I agree with you 100%. It felt so <laughs> clumsy and, like, poorly orchestrated and, like... Like you wonder, like Sandy's, like ah, you know what, dude? I, I I'm really not interested. Why don't you leave me alone? It's like, it's it's the Demi Moore uh, uh, sexual harassment movie from the '90s, right? Oh, disclosure, disclosure. That, that yes, disclosure. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what it felt like a little bit. But I don't know. Yeah. I I didn't like it. And and by the way, and then Rachel just like gets poochied. Hey, poochie, you look like you've got something to say. Do you? Yes, I certainly do. I have to go now. My planet needs me. Oh, she's dead! <laughs> like, during the... She just disappears and is never seen again. She gets returned to her home planet with no sort of <laughs> fanfare whatsoever. She's just... She was in one episode, you know, sitting on the couch with Jimmy Cooper, and the next episode, she's gone forever. <laughs> it would have been funny it would have been well it, it would just get so complicated at that point you know like jimmy cooper and her and i don't know that it would get kind of just like a little bit too confusing so it's good that they injected her <laughs> oh i agree i agree with you 100 percent. like she had to go i just i just thought it was funny just the way that she literally just disappeared with no fan like they, they never mentioned her name again on the show <laughs> That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when you leave the Amish community and you're shunned. It's like it's just... <laughs> she did the Irish goodbye. Yes, you know, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> she, I love the Irish goodbye. That's my favorite. Uh, that's my favorite thing. I, I always do an Irish goodbye. But that's the proper way to exit. It absolutely is. Yeah. It's Otherwise, just... you're arrogant or you're a narcissist. That's what I say. Yeah. If, you, if you have to walk around saying goodbye to everybody because you think they care that you're leaving, you're a narcissist. That's... <laughs> oh, I don't want to leave, but maybe you can convince me to stay. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to spend an hour and a half saying goodbye oh, to everybody. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about the other half of this uh, this uh, four-way love square here, Kirsten and Jimmy. And, yeah. uh, and so you've got, you've got Kirsten, uh, who is, again, she's kind of sort of playing the Sandy role here uh, in, to Jimmy sort of trying to seduce her a little bit. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, she is actually sort of leading Jimmy on a little bit. She's having secret conversations with Jimmy. She's loaning him $100,000. She's, you know, helping him paint his apartment. She's doing all of these things. And then he, of course, being being Milhouse's dad, tries to make out with her. <laughs> and that fails miserably. But um, but it does put a little bit of pressure and tension on the uh, on the relationship. But. I, the first thing I want to focus on is is sort of the uh, the hard money loan that he gets from Kirsten here. Like, yeah, they're standing in they're standing in one of many multi million dollar houses that Kirsten's company builds, and he's asking her for a uh, a short term hard money hundred thousand dollar loan. And my my perspective on this is that there's no universe where Jimmy's problem. Whatever it is, he's managing money for who knows how many people where his problem is solved even temporarily for a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Like it felt very much to me like we need an amount of money that people who watch the show will think is a lot of money, but actually isn't a lot of money. <laughs> Yeah, that's the uh, like making the minimum payment on your credit card bill. Yeah, <laughs> it doesn't help you. Or it doesn't do anything. You got to pay that thing off. Whatever that, whatever like you're saying, whatever uh, whatever amount it is. Because I, I would think you you know you're getting a probably well if he's managing people's money like that you're getting into the millions probably yeah, you have to be you have to be yeah he's got to have a yeah he's got to have a multi million dollar problem otherwise. He's got a house that we find out he's got three point six million dollars in equity on. Yeah, what? That's right. I mean, it's like okay, you're go you're gonna go to your next door neighbor ex girlfriend for a hundred thousand dollar hard money loan instead of taking out a note on the on the three point six million dollars in equity you have in your house. Come on, man. Yeah. What are you yeah. doing? It it, yeah. it should be for him, for Kirsten. 
this should be the red flag of all red flags. She's a smart woman. She's a businesswoman. She's a senior yeah. executive at a developer. She knows, she has to know that there's no world where Jimmy Cooper's problem is solved with a hundred thousand dollar loan. Whatever his problem yeah. is, she knows that yeah. her money doesn't solve that problem, but she gives it to him anyway. Yeah. And that goes back to the whole thing about her leading, uh, leading Jimmy on a little bit. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's it, it, that, and I, I think that's one of the problems. Like when uh, men and women are, are Our let's friends. be friends. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> because men don't want to be friends, the women do, and the men take everything the women do as leading them on. Or do you have a different perspective on that? <laughs> I, I, no, I think that's right. Yeah. I think that uh, you know, like especially like her, like Kirsten, you know, like she's obviously attract, like physically attract, smart, and everything else, like you were saying. But how you know what what sort of um, what sort of an attraction would she find in Jimmy, knowing him as long as she hasn't known him? Right. No, you're you're you know, absolutely like, right. Yeah, like why would why would she wouldn't? And and it's clear that she doesn't. Like she's mm-hmm. conflicted a little bit because she has she has the feel, she has the memories, the nostalgia. Yeah. Right. Yes. Yes. But but it's not nostalgia doesn't make people cheat like it's a pleasant memory, not a, you know, thing that you want to yeah. revisit necessarily for, for Kirsten, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. <laughs> well, especially when we find out later that she got a, uh, a Bobo with uh, Jimmy Cooper's baby. <laughs> Cause she knew he was a loser. <laughs> I know that's uh and that's probably as D I, cause I never really liked that, that whole arc uh, with her like being an alcoholic. Yeah, but I do like I did like the part where you know like she did she she had a, a the uh, the abortion <laughs> and uh, I, I kind of wish that they had actually kind of delved more into that as far as uh, uh, as for for her as a story. I know? do too. I do too. I it felt again it was one of those plot lines where you know it came up in one episode. By the end of the episode, Teresa had made the decision to have the baby, and that was that. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, you know, I, this is after Kirsten gives that kind of heartfelt speech and they, they have lunch together and talk about it. And you're like, holy crap, we're learning a little bit about K- Kirsten here. And yeah. then it's just like, well, let's never talk about that again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, oh, next. Uh, what, did you, what did you say? Uh, next uh, next storyline. Next storyline. <laughs> just, yep. we, yeah. we, we just burned <laughs> through three episodes worth of material. <laughs> It's the monster of the week. (laughs) (laughs) It really is. Yeah. yeah. So let's see. Kirsten and anything else I have on Kirsten and Jimmy. Oh, I, so I have a question for you. Do you think that uh, Kirsten, when, when she invites Ryan to stay after, after the mom gets shit faced and bails, um, at the at the casino night, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. When she invites Kirsten to stay, do you think that, uh, or that Kirsten, when she invites Ryan to stay, do you think she's doing this to make up to Sandy for the fact that she kind of wants to bang Jimmy Cooper and instead loan him a briefcase of cash? <laughs> 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 I think because she's an older, you know, like they only have one child, right? It's Seth. Yeah. And if, <laughs> and if I were looking at Seth as my only son, I would like, uh, can I get another run? <laughs> as far as like, can I get another chance? You know can what I mean? Let's, let's run that last card one more time. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right. That's fair. That's fair. And then, of course, at the end of season four, she actually is pregnant again. Oh, yeah. That's right. So, Do they have twins? I think they had twins. No. Uh, or just one. I don't remember. I don't remember. remember. I don't remember. I haven't watched it yet, so I don't remember for sure. <laughs> but uh, we'll just say that they have twins because you know older couples have twins. That's true. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> fertility treatments. Thank you. Yeah. 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 <laughs> What did you think? What, what did you think? You thought it was a guilt? Well, I thought that I thought that it definitely played into it because she kind of goes from she kind of goes from no, no, no to yes. And look, I think there's an argument to be made here that that actually she's right to say no, um, because I mean, you think about it. This is a guy who this is a felon, right? 
mm-hmm. he, 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 you came in contact with him because he, uh, he stole a car and evaded the police. These are serious, serious felonies, and they aren't his first run-in with the law. So he's a repeat offender. Um, <clears throat> he, the first thing he does, they go out to a party, and it's not his fault, but she doesn't know that, right? And so from her perspective, yeah. it, they go out to a party, and Seth gets in a fight. And, and, uh, and so she's got to be like, Hey, look, he's a bad influence on Seth, even though that was mostly Seth's fault. She, she probably has to give her son the, the, the benefit of the doubt. And then she takes mercy on him and he repays her after his mom ditches him. She takes mercy on him, lets him come back until they can find, you know, someplace to put him in foster care. And then he repays her by running away and burning down her model home. (laughs) Home. <laughs> I, I mean, and, and then later he's in, involved in gunplay and a gunplay incident because of the, the guys he was working with at the, the diner. And yeah. he, uh, he goes to, to Chino to transport a stolen vehicle for his freaking hoodlum brother. I mean, there's a lot of evidence here that maybe Kirsten was right. Maybe we shouldn't let this, this violent convicted or this violent felon into our home to corrupt our, our family. Yeah. And, you know, it's not like he's a young kid, you know, he's a teenager. So there's that part of it too. How much, at a certain point you start, you stop, um, not that your personality or your character is set in stone, but yeah, at a certain point, you, you, there's only so much you can do. Like yeah, you're the, pointing at. That's you know, exactly so. right. The turnaround is, is yeah, minimal, right? You, you, yeah. you the, the die has been cast at some point and, yeah. and yeah. you know, they, they hang this whole thing on while well, Ryan's smart, right? He's a smart kid. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. He's a smart kid because he scored the 98th percentile on his AC on his SATs. Which which means yeah. he was scoring between a fourteen forty and a fifteen twenty, right? Those are th- that's a good score, but he's a sophomore. Why would he have taken the SAT already? First of all, <laughs> and and second of all, why would he be taking the SAT at all? I don't believe for one minute that Ryan's mom paid the fees for him to take the damn SAT. <laughs> You're not going to college anyway. <laughs> I can hear it. I grew up around these people. <laughs> Did you? Well, not yeah. not exactly, but I mean, look, I I you know I I've been clear about the fact that I come from a white trash background. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Well, I think that you're right. Like, but you know, at the time, we we made the assumption that he was a junior, right? Like, yeah, that, that's, that true. Was, that's true. That's true. We did so. Say, yeah. That's true. So it would have made sense. But but again, it's still like, oh, well, Ryan's smart because he did well on his SATs. <laughs> like, oh, okay. Sure. And for whatever reason that that said, I mean, really what drove this was Sandy bringing him home. Yeah. Well, and and, I mean, and, that's yeah. and Sandy sees himself in Ryan. We talked about this a little bit uh, already, yeah. but but he definitely does. He sees he sees a, an at-risk kid who's who seemingly has a soul still he hasn't lost it yet and he knows yeah. that if he goes into the system he's going to lose his soul so yeah. he's trying to trying to prevent that from happening sandy's also got a you know a savior a little bit of a savior complex too at the same time oh yeah yeah that's the whole thing with the public defender right. you know being that guy but the, the one thing i don't see from him is just and maybe it's just the the casting is like him being a physically like you who, who is capable of violence you know, I don't see that in Sandy. At oh all. no, I don't either. I don't either. Yeah. He very much feels like a conscientious objector type. You know, and yeah. Yeah. yeah, they put yeah. putting flowers in gun barrels and stuff like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I could see you know, like Caleb. I could see him as being physical. You know, like something like some a guy like that with, with that presence. You know, like a bigger guy. I don't see that with Sandy at all. That was one so. of the, that was one of the shows that I wrote down as a spinoff prequel was, uh, was, uh, Caleb coming up in the world of land development in the OC, sort of like a oh, Ozark yeah. type thing. Oh, that would be fantastic. Actually. <laughs> I think it'd be that, really good. I think it'd be really yeah. good. It'd be fun. That would be yeah. like 20 set 20 years, like set in the seventies, you know, I think it'd be, yeah. Think it'd be oh, that'd be cool. fantastic. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, 
Uh, but, we'll, we'll have to get Josh Schwartz to, yeah, to Josh sign Schwartz off to write the damn thing. Exactly. <laughs> uh, they're talking. They 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 talked about a, a reboot. There's there's definitely a little bit of energy behind a reboot. They want they want 